right? This is uh, Super Ninja Boy. Uh, love the opening here. Uh, the uh, music and the animation is pretty cool. Kind of a strange pink though. It's usually kind of... I don't know, pink's usually used for transparency and stuff. Uh, not uh, intentionally used. At least I think it's pretty close to the transparent pink anyways. Uh, but yeah, it's also strange there's no track mode, it just kind of loops over and over if you leave it. I'm just gonna start up here. I'm not gonna be playing through the whole thing, just uh, probably up to the first four of all there with the uh, bandits in the cave. Sweet ones are basically potions. Dragon eggs let you fly around in, uh, during the combat scenes. They're not terribly useful during general combat, but there's a couple areas where you can uh, really cheese the game by using them. Uh, they also let you fly through walls and stuff, which is uh, kind of their main use. At least. They let you fly through walls in certain areas, but also like go up and around pits and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure actually if I'll go to uh, get to a place that uh, would use it, but uh, just in case. I'm gonna skip through this here just to get the uh, escape leaf. Let's you just escape from any battle. Probably... Okay, got this I equips automatically. So this is another game, uh, like Dr. Franken that I played earlier that I had as a kid. Uh, I did actually play this a fair bit. I never got very far. Uh, the reason for that is uh, this here. Uh, the game uses a password system. Uh, now, because I'm not very far and I don't have many items or have, uh, you know, set any, set very many flags, uh, you know, open chests and completed story elements, the password's not that long, but I believe it does actually go to at least two full lines. I'm, I don't remember if it goes further. Uh, so that was always a, a big problem. You know, I'd get, you know, I'd play through a bit, get through a couple towns, have my passwords, and then, you know, I'd lose them, or, uh, you know, they'd get destroyed or something, or my mom would clean my room or wherever, and, you know, they'd get cleaned away somewhere. Uh, this is the combat. You see it's uh, a side-scrolling, like, brawler style. You've got different moves you can do. You can pick them up and throw them. Uh, kind of a three-hit combo. You can throw them into each other. Uh, and once you defeat a certain amount, the uh, fight ends and you win. Uh, these guys are... There's, and there's different kinds of enemies. Uh, these guys are pretty weak. One hit kill. That little fireball would have uh, hurt an enemy if it hit them. You do that as well. Uh, that's it for them. And you get uh, experience points and levels. Yeah, so going back to the passwords, it, it was always uh, you know a huge bother to put them in and then to write them down again when you were done. You, know, you couldn't just turn the game on and play for 10 minutes and then, you know, grind a couple levels or whatever. It always had to be like, okay, get out the passwords, write, uh, enter the password, write the password down. Uh, these guys, you have to hit like this, but they die in one hit.
Yeah, so I would, you know, I'd lose the passwords, uh, I'd have sheets full of passwords and couldn't remember which was the newest one. So I'd always kind of play through the game over and over and, you know, just kind of do the first couple areas uh, before kind of losing where I was. I've never known what this thing here is. Uh, I don't know if there's a hidden thing there or it's just some, you know, somebody placed the wrong tile when they were uh, designing the level. So if, you, if you've played this game and you know kind of where it is, I think the farthest I got was up to, I think, where the, uh, the fairy town with the mushrooms and stuff. All like the mushroom trees. I believe that, that was kind of where I tended to get. Uh, although of course there were a couple times when, you know, you enter the password wrong, uh, one character off or something, and it just warps you to some completely random place. Uh, I don't believe the passwords have a, a checksum or anything, or a CRC, they're just, uh, uh, there, there might be some validation check, but it's pretty easy to just get one character off and have it just do something totally random. Uh, and I kind of looked up, it looks like there's a list of passwords and, uh, you know, like start at the, the first area with, uh, you know, all the items and money and stuff, and, uh, a lot of them just seem kind of, I don't know, some of them are pretty short and stuff. Uh, it doesn't look to me like there's, like there is any kind of uh, checking on them. If, if you just enter random stuff, it'll take you to random places. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but yeah. Uh, so that was kind of unfortunate, you know, if, if that hadn't been the case, I probably would have played this game a lot more and uh, actually beat it probably several times. Uh, the first time I beat it was just a few years ago I went through. Uh, and, you know, there's one thing that, you know, fixes that. So that was the only way I was able to get through the game. Uh, and also the game is two-player, which is pretty fun. Uh, it's a pretty high encounter rate, but I guess then it's, you know, kind of more like just playing a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Uh, there's not a ton of, like, story stuff either, so you're not, second player is not sitting there uh, watching the first player just navigate the whole time or, you know, go through cutscenes and dialogue and stuff. It's, you know, the high encounter rate is kind of annoying, but uh, if you've got a second player, I guess if you look at look at it as just a beat em up, then it's pretty good. Uh, there's the uh, boss over there. I guess I took the wrong tunnel, but... Uh... Yeah, two player is also fun because there's, uh... well it's fun, but also frustrating because there's friendly fire you can hit each other quite easily, uh, knock enemies into each other, pick up and throw an enemy, and then hit your ally. Uh, but some of the uh, magic and stuff that you get is also pretty easy to accidentally start hitting each other. Yeah, it was nice uh, a few years ago to go through this whole game, just to kind of see what it was actually, you know, what's past the first couple bosses. Uh, about the bosses, one interesting thing, um, the majority of the, well, all of the normal enemies and the majority of the mini-bosses are just, uh, you know, this the side-scrolling beat-em-up, and there are different kind of terrains and stuff you fight in eventually. Uh, but the major bosses, uh, they are actually like uh, side-on, turn-based, role-playing game style, uh, like Final Fantasy, which is uh, kind of strange. 
you get different uh, commands based on what equipment you have. Like if you've got a, uh, you can buy a sword and nun and I think like nunchucks and stuff uh, later. And so if you've got them in your inventory and equipped, then you can you hit the boss with them. Uh, you can use your different magic and stuff on them once you get it. So that's I don't know, kind of interesting. Uh, Yeah, so I did have this as a kid, I don't remember where I got it, or, you know, if, if I asked for it, or if my parents were just like, oh, he, he likes ninjas, it'll be a good birthday present. But, uh, yeah, I do remember I did have it, it was either new or at least uh, not that used, because I think I did have the box in the manual. Uh, of course, uh, you know, being a kid, I threw out all my boxes and manuals, so yeah, I don't have any of those anymore. Yeah, these guys are a pain. Yeah, I, I don't care for uh, enemies where you just have to sit around waiting for them to uh, make themselves vulnerable. So I really like the the visuals. Well, I mean the uh, the world map here is pretty simple. This is a very uh, the overhead map is a very kind of early 16-bit RPG map. It's you know not it's not Final Fantasy VI or Chrono Trigger here. Uh, the music is very nice though. Uh, I don't know if it's all just nostalgia, but uh, there's a couple or actually a fairly really good portion of them are. Pretty good songs. Uh, usually, I've got these in like my uh, video game uh, playlist. On my phone. Yeah, and as you can see, the uh, counter rate is kind of high. At least it, it does give you the option to flee right there at the start. And the, you know, beat em up style. Uh, combat here is, you know, it's more interesting than just uh, mashing the fight command over and over like in a Final Fantasy game, so. So well, yeah, it does make uh, going long distances when you're crossing over the world map kind of annoying. Alright, so this is the first... I guess they're... I believe they do give you the an aura ball, which is one of your kind of, you know, Triforce pieces, kind of... I don't know. Alright, that was... Uh, yeah, I probably should have been paying more attention there. Uh, oh, All right, so I've got money and I'm healed, so and that's not a very long dungeon. So I think I'll just go back, get a few more of these. You can see the translation is uh, very direct Japanese to English. Uh, when he says, is it okay when you're uh, buying an item? Uh, I've noticed a lot of my, uh, of my Japanese friends when they're speaking English, that's what they will say. Uh, they often say, is it okay? Uh, and, that seems kind of like a very... Probably like a Yoroshi Deska or something is what they're thinking and then directly translating that, but... Uh, 
Uh, I don't remember how much the rest of the translation is, because like I said, it's very, very story light. You know, you're not playing this for the story, so... If I recall correctly, it's just, like, evil, rich dictator guy... I don't know, any... Or no, like a doctor... Dr. Wily kind of doctor guy, uh, leading an alien army or something. Yeah, it's not, uh... You're not playing it for that. At least there is a little bit of a uh, kind of like Z-axis uh, collision detection here. Not like, you know, some uh, beat-em-ups where you gotta be right on the right, uh, the, the right line, otherwise you don't hit them. You can seem to kind of hit them. You're a little bit offset, which is nice. Yeah, I don't... It must not be just dependent on level, because see, I'm level 6 now, and I'm still getting caught by these guys. Oops. Yeah, if I recall correctly, you can dump enemies into the uh, bottomless pits here, but it I don't think it counts towards your kill count, so you just end up uh, you know, wasting time just dumping them in there over and over. But I do like this move, it's a funny animation. So there's also these other moves I should... Actually, yeah, I'll save the uh, special moves for the boss. I don't have too many. Uh, you can see down there on the bottom, uh, NP, I believe, is uh, Ninja Points, which is... Uh, I think that's the one I use... That's my M MP, like Magic Points, basically, which is for using uh, the Escape Leaf that I got earlier. And then later you get... Uh, I know there's a shuriken you can get, uh, where it gives you like a, you know, a handful of shurikens, and every time you punch, you shoot a shuriken. And I believe there's like a shuriken shield that spins around you. Uh, those are the only ones I can remember because those are the only ones you, I think, get, you know, uh, within the span of time that I played. Uh, the uh, the rest of them. I probably got when I played through it earlier, uh, a couple years ago, but uh, I never got them as a kid, so I don't really remember them. And then the uh, the M there is that I just got. Uh, that's used to pull off. Uh, there's a couple different special moves you can do in combat, like a tornado kick and a, like, super somersault kick, I believe. Yeah, see, that was, like, two steps, and I got another counter, which is kind of ridiculous. Alright. Just check my equipment. Okay, it's all good. That. Alright. Round two. Alright, so I just did the one there. You probably heard the uh, sound effect anyways. Uh, remember how to do... How to do the other one. I believe it was a button combination or something. Okay, no, that is using my... Okay, it is using NP. I must have. Uh, okay, the M must be for using the uh, escape leaf and stuff. Yeah, so there is the. Uh, there is supposed to be the like tornado kick, but I. 
I guess you have to maybe unlock it or something, or it's some button combination that I'm not getting right. Because, yeah, pretty after you go through here, there's another uh, tunnel up north of the starting town you can go through. And that uh, brings you to this other little village where there's a couple uh, training missions where you go through like these side-scrolling platforming levels. And if you beat them, then you get, uh, I believe it's the... Uh, I believe it's the shuriken, shuriken spell, and... It might be the thing to do the jump kick. Alright, so there we go. We go the yellow aura ball. Yeah, and I, I can't remember how many there is. There's actually... Like, I got one of these pretty quickly, but I think there is like 8 or 10 or something of them. So there is still quite a bit left to go in the game. I don't know if the escape leaf would let me get out of here. Okay. Yeah, no, it's just for battles, it's not an escape rope. Uh, there are some other cool items you can buy. There's a there's you know other health items, there's a sword you can use. Uh, you would go into your menu during battle and equip it. Uh, this is the dragon egg. It's it, it doesn't help you in a fight at all. Uh, but in the side-scrolling levels, see, you can just do that, and then just fly through the entire level. Uh, animation there, expression is pretty funny. Sometimes there are uh, nunchucks or a uh, sword hidden in the uh, blocks there. much else to show it's so it's a pretty simple game you, you know you can get different armor but it just I believe auto equips the newest one uh, not much to your stats you just you know there's no real uh, character building you just kind of level up and gain stats you get the different ore balls uh, I believe on this screen too you do eventually get like a, you get a boat and uh, I can't remember if there's like a fly flying machine or something, but you do get other modes of transportation, you know, all that. The key items and stuff. So it's a pretty fun game. Uh, it's actually part of a series, although I believe the majority of them are not released here. There's... Uh, they're, the Super Nintendo ones are called Super Chinese World in Japan. Uh, so there's Super Chinese, this is Super Chinese World, and then there's Super Chinese World 2 and 3 also available on the SNES, although they were only released in Japan. Uh, then there's also various other ones, I believe there's some for the Game Boy and NES. Uh, I haven't played any of them really, I did boot up uh, 2 briefly. Uh, I may play it sometime. Uh, I do know, I'm, well I'm sure there's a translation patch, it's probably not, not got a lot of text, somebody must have translated it, but I do know Japanese, so I could play through it anyways. Well I'm not sure how entertaining that would be, because there'd probably be a lot of uh, kind of stopping to double check stuff in dictionary. And, Stuff like that. Also, having to narrate everything that was being said might be a bit odd. 
yeah, so this is uh, Super Ninja Boy. A pretty fun game, you know, the encounter rate and the password system kind of suck. Uh, both of those are somewhat fixed on emulator. You know, I'm not fast forwarding right now, but uh, that would kind of help. Although you can't really fast forward through the battles, which is the unfortunate part. Uh, Final Fantasy games, you know, turn-based games, you can just, you know, hold down the fight button and just fast forward through everything. But you can't really do that here. I don't believe it's a very long game. I think it's, you know, 15 or 20 hours or so. Uh, and it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Not a, you know, crazy in-depth plot or anything. Uh, you know, you don't have to spend too much time character building or messing around with items or whatever. And it's got neat music. It'd be a pretty good choice for a co-op game, you know, if you had a friend you wanted to go through an entire game with. Or just, uh, Sometimes, you know, just have them drop in and out because the uh, co-op the second player does just uh, mirror your stats. It's not like they start at level one or anything like that. So, you know, they can play when they feel like it. Yeah, so I guess that's... Uh... Super Ninja Boy. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Alright, so I decided to just come back to this. Uh, I originally just wanted to check what the merchant was saying there. Uh, I was correct about him, uh, what he's saying when he says, uh, is it okay? But uh, as you can see, there's actually. Uh, Quite a few other differences here, uh, not just on the title screen, but we'll see more in the actual game. As you can see, it's you know black, uh, black background, not pink, and it's a different uh, uh, logo there. Uh, so this is the same. Start one player, easy. So this is quite different here. Uh, you know, there's clouds even that I don't think were in the English version. There's that big wall. Uh, the town is different. Uh, player sprite is different. Uh, now, if we go into the town, you know, the town's a different, slightly different layout. All the, uh, I think most of the character sprites are the same. Uh, the main character is different. Uh, the town layout is different. Uh, he doesn't, in the Japanese version, I thought he would say, you know, something there, but he doesn't actually have any confirmation dialogue. That was, I guess, added for the English version. Uh, as we can see, the town layout, like, it is a bit different, and it's not just a, uh, you know, they didn't just change the palette, or like, the sprites. They've actually, you know, moved stuff around. These are a bit different. Uh, this is one big door, whereas in the English version, it's uh, kind of two small doors next to each other. Uh, Nostradamus, I believe this was, uh, is not open yet. I, I didn't play through this much, just a little bit, so I don't know if uh, that opens up later. But uh, I, this part is the same anyway, as we go through talk to them. Uh, he did, uh, I guess I probably should have read that, but he did mention something about seeing, uh, I believe he said something about seeing Nostromus here, get the escape leaf, but uh, as you can see it is closed and I can't get in there, so I don't know if I have to just uh, go somewhere else. Uh, I did look up a Japanese uh, Let's Play of this, uh, and it looks like the differences are mostly just in this starting area. Uh, like, there are some other or er, uh, sprite differences, but it's not like a totally different game or anything. Uh, aim high encounter rate. Keep hitting the wrong button there, I'm trying to 
So yeah, it, it goes up to that mountain, which goes through the other area. Uh, so the the combat is actually quite stiff here. Uh, it's I don't know, it's kind of hard to show, but uh, you know, everything you do, like landing from a jump or uh, punching or whatever, it kind of sticks you to the ground. I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but uh, punching here is very stiff. Like, you can't move and punch, you stop dead as soon as you punch. Uh, there's a significant difference there between the uh, punches. The jump animation is uh, weird and different. Uh, and see, you can get, uh, I don't believe you could get uh, multiple things out of uh, one block. Uh, see, I got the sword there. That's something I never got when I was playing earlier. But you can see, you pick it up and uh, smack them with it. God, the encounters are high in this game. I'm not sure what uh, hit me there, but... So I did go into the other uh, cave there earlier, and it is the exact same, at least in terms of layout. You go through to the bandit, uh, but uh, one thing I noticed, the battles in the cave are actually different. They, uh, I don't recall there being this kind of like lava, oh and you can't run. Yeah, but anyways, I don't recall there being a lava background in the uh, English version. And uh, though you can't see it in this one, uh, maybe the next battle I'll get it. Uh, some of the battlefields in the Japanese version actually have uh, like multiple levels and stuff that you can jump up onto. Which uh, I don't recall being very in the English version, or at least not being very common. I guess that would probably confuse the uh, path finding of the AI. You know, they sometimes just fall off the pits, or fall off into the pits, uh, so I, d I don't imagine they navigate the, uh, you know, the cliffs and stuff very good. It probably got, you know, possible to just stand up somewhere and uh, Chuck shurikens at them or something. But yeah, as you can see, it's I, you know I'm only hitting one at a time there, and uh, it's very stiff and slow, and you can't run as far as I can tell, unless that's in you know at least they turn that into an item you get later. Yeah, that is, uh, the sprite differences and stuff, like the background and, you know, the backgrounds in the town and stuff there are a bit odd because they're not, uh, well, I don't know, in the Japanese version, the town, you know, the overworld map, uh, town sprite there it has a much more, like, Japanese style, even though the game in Japan is called Super Chinese World. So they, I think it looks kind of like just a more generic, kind of stereotypical Asian kind of village in the English version, even though uh, being Super Ninja Boy instead of Super Chinese World, I would expect more, you know, maybe Japanese style. Uh, and the other odd thing is like that jumping animation, it's... I don't remember that being in the English one, uh, and a lot of the other animation changes, like the overall map sprite here, uh, and the town sprites, they don't, you know, they don't look worse. 
but they also aren't, you know, totally different either. They just kind of changed them. So I'm really curious, like, why they did that. Because, uh, you know, often when games get brought over, if there's changes, it's either making the game better, like, you know, just improving the sprites if they were, uh, you know, if there's any problems with them or they just didn't fit or whatever. Or, you know, for, like, censoring or localization purposes, like, you know, I can see them removing all the ninja stuff and, you know, making it take place in New York or something. But they didn't do that. Like, I don't know why they just changed all these sprites. It's, uh, unfortunately, this game's not very popular. I couldn't find really much information about, like, you know, its releases or anything like that, or any articles, so... You know, I, I don't know if this is like just a version one of the game in Japan, and then it was updated in Japan and released, and then uh, the you know the version two or you know 1.1 version was what uh, we ended up getting a translated version of. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be interested to find out more, but uh, fortunately, I don't think there's uh, much information. probably add more information if I can find it, but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and from what I saw in the uh, Japanese uh, Let's Play, I just kind of skipped through it. There's not like any major other changes, a couple other sprite differences here and there, but uh, it's not like it becomes a completely different game. You still go through the same uh, same areas. Yeah.